what it do, what you see, be like a battery, I'm staying charged on my feet, I'm like a factory, dropping lines like an assembly, I'm staying on point, it's my strategy, feel like they're tracking me. How you doing guys, welcome to Zooka Tube, and today we're going to be reviewing Stargirl Season 2, Episode 7, and you know the title already, Summer School Chapter 7. So now, where we left off, right, in the last episode was pretty crazy. We had Ellipso, you know, killing Isaac, sending Cindy to the Shadow Realm or something, you know, weakening the shade, having his actual physical form, like, present in this, you know. He also disguised himself as a young little kid version of Bruce Gordon from one of the previous episode flashbacks, you know, and went off into the town. But uh, before I, like, get into that whole thing... You know, that was a pretty exciting episode, and this episode has some uh, interesting uh, character development and stuff like that in there. But I'm going to go into the, the little promo. I'll uh, go through the summary, you know what I mean, give my review, and then we'll do some spoilers at the end. So let's get right into this promo before I get too far into it. Something terrible has happened. Yeah. Something terrible. It's like a zombie. Dun, 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 dun. Forever. No! Very spooky wooky episode right there, right? So interesting little promo there. But um basically it's a, it's very heavily focused on Yolanda in this whole episode. So that's that's one thing that you notice right away in the trailer, and that's that's definitely sh straight up the whole episode. So let's get right into it, right? They show Yolanda back in uh, like a confessional at the church, you know, talking to the priest, asking about the devil and forgiveness for murder, like if the person is evil and stuff like that, right? And it cuts to July 3rd. It's the it's the town preparing for the 4th of July, like holiday celebrations, you know, but the, the weather's bad. And um, they show like the missing person's paper for Isaac and stuff like that. And obviously because of Eclipso, the weather's going to keep getting worse probably, right? Maybe they'll have a big storm, a tornado or some shit, right? Or a hurricane or I don't know. Who knows? And they show Barbara having troubles at her company, which is having like financial issues and stuff like that, right? And they show the shade trying to contact Barbara, but he can't form his physical form and he's like still like bleeding from his wounds or whatever, right? And then it cuts to Yolanda having trouble at work and Maria, a co-worker, is like helping her, right? And Eclipso corrupts Maria and Maria like ends up pouring hot coffee on the customer and they show the little boy Eclipso in the restaurant and stuff like that. But like, let me just play a clip of that whole thing because that was, that was pretty wild. I've been waiting forever in a day. Well, you gotta wait your turn, Joe. If this wasn't the only diner in town, I wouldn't be waiting here at all. I want coffee Damn. now. What a dick. Oh, there it is. The, the corruption. Damn. Got him. Because I need the money and my mom is sick and I need, but I need to work. I'll see you tomorrow. Damn. She's going to end up like losing her job or something over some shit like that. But she don't know. She didn't know. Dun dun, spooky wookie stuff. Yolanda's like, what the hell was that, man? But there's that little boy. Little Gordon. That was a little scary. What is he doing? It's okay. It was just an accident. Damn. Creepy ass kid. Stay away from him. Ah, you're going to give him a lollipop. That kid's a savage. You don't even know. Ah. So, after that, right, Courtney gets approached by Cameron for help for the whole 4th of July thing, right? And they show Mike helping Pat rebuild Stripe. And he's a little disappointed on what he's stuck doing, right? And the broken shards from Eclipse over there. And they're sitting on the table and they draw Mike in and he starts seeing like leeches on himself and freaking out, right? And they show Yolanda having headaches and hearing Brainwave's voice. And she goes back to the church and her mom's there. And there's like drama, you know, and she sees flashes of Brainwave and like, you know, that there's like, uh, you know, she follows him and it goes to the school. And then there's like a blood trail and all kinds of creepy stuff going on, you know, and it flashes between like Brainwave Jr. and Brainwave. And it's like messing with her head. 
right? You know, all this wild kind of shit, right? And they show Courtney show up, try to help her. And Yolanda opens up and tells the JSA, like, what she did to Brainwave. And they, you know, all back her. on. Although, like, she's kind of pissed because, like, people like Rick, like, didn't kill Grundy and, like, had way more of a reason, probably a redeemable reason or forgivable reason, let's say, for, for killing Grundy kind of deal in the situation, but he didn't take it. Right. And, uh, before I get any, any further into it, I mean, there's it's not much, it's just directed on one character mostly in this and that's Yolanda. So it's not like a whole lot of spoilers going on, but, uh, before I finish the rest of it, uh, I'm going to give you my overall review for this episode. I'd give this episode like, I don't know, I'd say a solid, like six and a half out of 10. It was just okay. Mild, nothing crazy, kind of cool, creepy stuff. I like creepy stuff, but overall, like, didn't give me much for the show. Like, you know, especially compared to the last episode, which was out of control good, definitely. But uh, this gives you a little bit more of an idea of, like, what's going to happen with certain characters and what Eclipso is going to do to the town, though. So that's pretty important, you know, but definitely like a six and a half out of ten. Now let's get into some spoilers. 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 Okay. So, right? After she tells, like, the JSA, all that stuff, right? She goes to do confession again. And, like, brainwaves on the other side. Saying that he planted himself in her mind. And Yolanda sees him. And then, like, has to, like, kill him again. And then he turns into Brainwave Jr. And blah, blah, blah. And it's all in her head. And, like, Courtney comes to help again. And, like... Courtney has to tell her fam about it all and everything, but let me play a little clip of that whole scenario. Dang. Things are getting wild. Oh no, Courtney's in trouble, but how is Brainwave doing anything to Courtney? It's all in her head, man. Bullshit. Now she's got her costume on. She's ready. Damn. Cut his throat again. Beast in it. Beast in it. Oh, look. It's Junior now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. So, pretty weird stuff, right? You're going to burn with me. That's weird, creepy stuff, huh? Ah, uh, look, he's burning. Uh, burning in the church. Okay, so. Right, Courtney has to tell her fam all about this whole thing, right? And, like, Mike talks about icicle situation and how he's regretful. And they show, like, the creepy Eclipso boy, like, watching Beth's house at the end and stuff like that. And just like chewing the fucking lollipop like a savage, you know, this little ass kid, super creepy. Like I would have right away like been like, yo, I got to shoot this kid from out the window or something if I saw him. I don't know. That, that kid's super spooky. But either way, let's see where that goes for the next episode. Again, I'd give this one a solid 6.5 out of 10. You know, uh, I can't wait to see where next week goes because I feel like that was just like a minor like gap at like transition episode to do a little character development and show you how big this is going to go for a bunch of people in the town and how it's going to mess things up on a major level, especially because we just lost a lot of characters, you know, technically. So let's see where that goes. Again, 6.5. Zuka 2. I'm staying charged on my feet. I'm like a factory. Dropping lines like an assembly. I'm staying on point. It's my strategy. Feel like they're tracking me. Yo, let me get on one. Not gonna get your tracks up. Homie, can I steal some? Homie, you can't stack up. My brother, can you shout me? You're barking up the wrong tree. I thought, why do you doubt me? Because you can't do shit without me. We don't like the radio and never play it, but that's cool. The enemy's supposed to hate it.